How to make a visual poem. Poetry used to be memorized and spoken out loud, and then people started writing it down. Nowadays, you're probably familiar with poetry that looks like this. But there are many more ways to create poetry. Check out this poem titled The Black Automaton in Tag, Refugee, by contemporary Los Angeles poet Douglas Kearney. Here he enlarges, tilts, and overlaps each letter. Notice the way some lines stand out because of their font style, size, and placement. These are quotes. Kearney appropriates popular song lyrics by Eminem, Ra Kim, and Digital Underground. Why do you think the poet would display the lyrics this way? Take something you wrote recently. It could be a note or a text message. Break up the text somehow. You could rewrite it, print it out, and cut it up. Put the words back together to create a poem. How can you alter the words to emphasize important parts of the poem? Artists who first created poetry this way broke a lot of rules. In the 1920s, a movement of artists and writers in Europe called Dadaist rejected what people thought poetry should be. While others wrote in traditional poetic forms, the Dadaists would cut up words and use chants to put them together. Here's another example of visual poetry by Italian writer and artist Ardengo Sofici, who was considered a part of the Futurist movement. Futurists, like the Dadaists, reacted against tradition. They believed the shapes of letters and words were important parts of a poem's meaning. This is part of a series by contemporary artist Carrie Mae Weems, titled, From Here I Saw What Happened and I Cried. Weems appropriated photographs depicting slavery from the mid-1800s, as well as contemporary African-American portraits. The artist enlarged and reprinted the photographs in red and reframed them using glass etched with her own words. Weems juxtaposes the text and image to create something new. Because of the changes, how do you experience the portrait differently? Take a photograph that's important to you and transform it. Next, juxtapose the image with your own words. Say something important about your photograph. What do we not know about it? Another photographer who plays with juxtaposition is Kansuke Yamamoto. Yamamoto was a poet and artist, and he referred to his dreamlike photographs as visual poetry. Yamamoto didn't have the luxury of a computer to alter his images. Instead, he manipulated negatives in a photography darkroom. He also used collage techniques to create unexpected juxtapositions. The title of this photograph comes from a poem called I Wish I Were Thinking in the Body of a Horse by a writer named Hideo Oguma. So not only did Yamamoto consider his work visual poetry, but he also referenced poets and poetry in his titles. Why do you think Yamamoto referred to his photographs as visual poetry? What makes this work a visual poem? Let's try creating a visual poem like his. Cut out images you like from photographs and magazines. Or use digital pictures that you've taken. Combine pictures in a way that you would never see in real life. Give the work a title with words selected from a favorite quote, film, or poem. How does a borrowed title change the meaning of a work of art? So what counts as a visual poem? Take a look at Yamamoto's visual poem next to an image by an artist who greatly influenced him, Man Ray. Is this photograph also a visual poem? Where else do you see visual poetry? Where do you see visual poetry in your life?